Hello everybody. Today I want to talk to you about the Ten Commandments. In my last video, I referenced the Ten Commandments as a point of law in the Old Testament that is for all people at all times, everywhere. And the reason I did that is because the Ten Commandments are very important at showing us on a basic level how it is that we stand guilty before God. And since these are moral issues, they're all moral issues either as we relate to God or as we relate to our fellow man, like I said, they apply to everybody. They don't just apply to the Jewish people to who they were originally given or to Christians. They apply to everybody throughout the world because these are all basic moral issues between how you relate to God and how you relate to your fellow man. And we find as we look through these how it is that we have sinned against both God and against our fellow man. So I want to take a closer look at the Ten Commandments so that we can better understand them really all the laws and especially as we will see in the Ten Commandments they're given for our benefit they're given for our protection they're given because God loves us and wants us to be right with him and to have peace and love between our fellow people here on earth so the laws aren't just given you know to like take away our fun God's not a, a big uh, a uh, scary dude up in the sky who just likes uh, beating us over our, the head and you know when we get out of line and do something that he says no you know that's not what God's about God's trying to protect us he's trying to show his love to us by uh, giving us these these laws that uh, make life better for us but the law also works as I explained in the last vi video in a very important way to show us our need for salvation. The law always served the purpose of uh, showing us our guilt because we would have never known that we had any guilt before God or in relation to our fellow man if it wasn't for the law. And um, so the law serves that purpose, points out the need for a savior. So now to take a better look at the Ten Commandments, we need to look in the book of Exodus. This is where uh, the Ten Commandments were given and we have them listed for us um, Exodus chapter 20 and we find that the first commandment actually we're gonna go through these and we're gonna find that the commandments start off with how we should honor and love God and we need to remember that all the commandments hinge on the two greatest commandments which are love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself these are the things the two things that Jesus said these are the two greatest commandments and all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments so if we in completion if you will uphold these two commandments to love God with all our hearts and to love our fellow man as ourselves if we if we live that out in every aspect of our lives we will automatically fulfill all the commandments because they all hang on those two things so looking at Exodus 20 and the Ten Commandments we find the first commandment is you shall have no other gods before me okay obviously this is how we honor God we understand we accept that God is the God there is no other God and we must not take any God before him we must not consider any God greater than him we must not consider him secondary to any other God and the second one is like it in many ways but it goes a little bit further you shall not make for yourself an idol okay um, again this is not putting anything else or any other God before God 
But it goes a little further because it's not really just God. It's, it, it's the point that we should not let anything come between us and God. We should not cast our affections upon something else in a greater measure than we do to God. And in our modern society, we often do that in many ways. You know, maybe we cast our affections upon our computer, or maybe we cast our affections be upon a, uh, a mate, you know, our, our boyfriend or our girlfriend or whatever the case may be, or even a wife or a husband. Um, <clears throat> maybe it's our job. Maybe it's, uh, you know, TV or something we do for fun, whatever, you know. If there's something that we allow to become, you know, the center of our life, you know, if we live our life around something other than God, then we're really making that thing an idol in our lives. We're allowing it to come between us and God. The third commandment, you shall not uh, take the name of the Lord your God in vain, or you shall not misuse his name. I think most of us understand this one, uh, you know. We hear people cast, casting around uh, the name of God in vain quite often as they use it to curse things and, and such. Uh, I think most of us understand that one. And this is just a way in which we, again, honor God by not making light or of or misusing his name. Uh, the fourth one, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Um, here again, this is a way in which we honor God by taking a day aside that we devote ourselves fully to our fellowship, our love, our honoring of God. And uh, number five. Now, in number five, we honor both God and our parents because this is honor your father and your mother. So, this is honoring God and it's honoring people because. We're honoring God by respecting the authority that he's placed over us. As God himself is in authority over us, he has set for us a pattern of authority in the scriptures that we ought to respect. And that is, of course, God himself, and then God hands down authority to our parents over us. And in the, in the husband and wife relationship, God gives authority to the husband, and the husband and wife have authority over the kids, you know, it's just this this order, this pattern that God has set up for us in Scripture, and we need to respect it. And we're even promised that if we do so in this one, this commandment comes with a promise that we will have long life. Number six, you shall not murder. That one's pretty obvious, you know. And, of course, that goes into loving our fellow man. If we love him, we're not going to, you know, murder them. Um, you, you shall not commit adultery. This is, you know, loving, loving and honoring your wife or the wife of another or the husband of another or whatever the case may be. Again, this is showing love to your fellow man. Uh, you shall not steal. Again, love to our fellow man by not taking from them what does not belong to us. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, which is essentially lying about your neighbor. In other areas, there is commands given, you shall not lie to one another. So this is basically, you know, do not lie. And this is another act of loving your fellow man. And uh, finally, the tenth one we have, you shall not covet. Uh, and it goes on to say your neighbor's house, uh, your neighbor's wife, his uh, manservant, maidservant, ox, donkey, anything that belongs to your neighbor. You know, don't be jealous of your neighbor's things. Don't uh, wish and plan and scheme to somehow, you know, take what your neighbor has, you know, because that, especially if it's his wife or her husband or whatever, that, you know, a lot of times then we end up back in adultery, you know, so uh, we get into trouble by, you know, being envious of what other people have. So, again, this is a way that which we honor and respect and show love toward our fellow man. So we can see that all the commandments work together to uphold the two greatest commandments that Jesus gave us. And now the final thing I want to say about the commandments is that as we read through them, we quickly realize that, um, you know, 
we've all offended some of these in some way at some point. And um, we're actually told in the New Testament that uh, if we break any of God's laws, we've broken them all. So, um, but we can look through the Ten Command Commandments, and it's pretty easy to see, if we really think about it, how it is that, yeah, we've broken maybe several of the Ten Commandments. And by breaking any of them, we've broken them all. But, you know, think about it a little bit. I mean, have you ever told a lie? Sure you have, you know. So, you know, if you've ever told even one little white lie, you know, you're a liar in God's eyes. You know, um, you know the Bible says that uh, if you look at a woman to lust after, you've committed adultery in your heart. So, you know, are you guilty of adultery in your heart? Sure, you know. I've been. I'm, I'm, I'm sure any of us who are honest would say, yeah, we've done that. Um, you know, taking the Lord's name in vain. Yeah, a lot of us have done that in some, at some point in our lives. Um, you know, uh, not keeping a holy day or a Sabbath day. You know, I mean, we can look through these and if we think about them, yeah, you know, somewhere along the way, if not very often, we've been guilty of uh, not living up to these commandments. Have we made an idol for ourselves? You know, have we allowed anything to come between us and God? Have we made anything in our lives more important than God? I mean, we, we will often say God's the most important thing to us, but in practicality, do we live that? Or do we live in such a way that something else is obviously more important? You know, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. So, I think it's pretty pretty obvious, pretty easy to tell that, you know, we've all broken the, many, if not all, of these commandments. And if we've broken one, again, we've broken them all. So we stand guilty, we stand accused before God. And if we die that way, you know, and we stand before God in judgment, and we got to stand there, admittedly having, you know, broken his commandments, guilty before God... And that's all we got. Then you know, that's it for us. You know, there there's nothing for us but the judgment of guilt and punishment to eternal hell. You know, that's the long and short of it. That's the bottom line. But the wondrous grace of the matter is the fact that Jesus came and took our punishment when He died on the cross. And so Jesus came to relieve that debt for us. He came to pay that debt for us. He knew that we could not stand up to the commandments of God. He knew that we would fail in that respect. So he came and lived a perfect life and then took our punishment for us so that we could be redeemed and set free from eternal punishment. And that is how the Ten Commandments and salvation apply to every man, woman, and child living on the earth today. God bless.